Hi, there you are. Great. <laughs> so, so you just want to jump right into it? No, you go ahead. Whatever you want to, you mean your, your complaints or, or uh, something else? Yes, my complaints. Let's make this a therapy session. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> some, some good will come out of this, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, okay. So they, they introduced me to you as A.T. Sharma. Would you rather call me, a, 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 would you rather me call you a tool, a tool or A.T.? No, A.T. is good, Tiffany. A.T. is cool. Yeah. Okay. All right, A.T. So here with the writer director of Hypnotica and um, very, very interesting film. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> very interesting. I, I always dig the concept of kind of working with um, like, the, what hypnosis could possibly do because it is it is kind of one of those weird things um, yeah like i get weirded out by anesthesia because we don't fully know exactly how it works we just know it works but it's like right it right seems like it's a mind over matter kind of thing where it's like it's knocking you out you don't know what's going on so you can survive it but it just it freaks yeah you out. yeah no you're right I, you know it's true like there is always that fear of like not being in control at all like somebody else is in control and God knows what could happen. You may not even wake up. You don't know. So it, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, totally. Have you ever been hypnotized? Uh, you know, I have not, but I <laughs> I use, and this is, this is going to be kind of a, I, I get mixed re responses when I say this. I tend yeah. to use the, some of the, some YouTube videos, like I do a lot of my research. I look at the comments. I, I go and I look up the person that, or the, the companies that are putting out these videos. Um, but mm. I think Michael... Oh gosh, I can't remember the name of his name off the top of my head. But there's Michael Seeley does a lot yeah. of these hypnosis videos that you, or you you play them, and it it he puts you into your sleep or whatever, and then it's supposed to help with all kinds of things. And you know, I believe it could possibly be a placebo effect, but maybe yeah. not. Um, yeah. And I'm aware of like potential risk that like, what if he's a psycho? I've actually started writing a short about that. Like, what if they're doing these these things to kind of make you like a sleeper agent or something? Um, yeah. But, but I, that's the closest I've gotten. And I was going to ask you, have you had experience with hypnosis? Like, how did this concept? Well, yeah. Out? No, it's a great question. Um, so uh, I don't know how much you know about me at all, uh, but um, I'm actually a medical doctor. Oh, wow. Um, cool. Yeah, I'm actually in the clinic right now, but I'm, <laughs> I'm taking time out during lunch to do the interview. Um, and after medical school, I did a weekend course in hypnosis. And, um, you know, I wasn't able to hypnotize anybody and I wasn't able to be hypnotized during that or at the end of that course, but I got some sense of it. And I saw a lot of, you know, other people getting hypnotized and that sort of thing. So um, it's kind of this weird area, Tiffany, where we don't really know what goes on in that subconscious part of the brain. It seems like it's almost like a, a part of the brain that allows us to be a follower. Uh, whatever somebody commands us to do almost, we want to follow. That doesn't mean that we're not conscious of it. When you're under hypnosis, you're still conscious mm -hmm. of what you're, you know, you're being told. It just seems like a really good idea. And so you say, okay, I'm going to do that. And, you know, look, I think we practice forms of hypnosis every day. It's just that the person is not as deep in a trance or anything, but, um, really good public speakers have a way of almost hypnotizing their audience. You right. know, um, certain relationships, dynamics, male, female dynamics, you know how it is, right? Uh, power of suggestion, basically. Yes, power of suggestion, command, control, and then the other person kind of subtly submits in a way. And, uh, but they still have some level of conscious awareness. Yeah, very cool. And uh, if I may ask, what field do you practice in? Because you said you're, you're an actual medical doctor. Yeah, I, I uh, practiced in the ER for a few years. Oh, wow. I'm Canadian. I grew up in Canada. Oh, so cool. I practiced in downtown Toronto for a few years. And then I, when I moved down here, I uh, practiced in urgent care. Because the beauty of that for me is um, that once I'm done with the patient, they go back to their primary care doctor and I can do long shifts. Like today I'm doing a 13 hour shift that allows me then to go and do all the other crazy stuff that I want to do. So, so then how did you, how did you get into uh, writing and direct, like where, where did you start when it came to the filmmaking process? 
Uh, well, um, it, it goes back before medical school a little bit because I, um, I actually wanted to study philosophy and I was doing my master's and I wanted to do philosophy and then I got accepted into medical school and I thought, oh my, you know, this is, this is really cool, but what am I going to do now? Like, should I go? Should I not go? At, at the very least, I'm going to learn about, you know, human beings, who we are and, and the whole thing. So I decided to go over uh, on an impulse to the head of um, the philosophy department at Dalhousie University. And that's where I was doing my my thesis and my master's. And I took a chance and he was actually the head of metaphysics. And that's what I wanted to study. Too. Oh. And so I knocked on his door and he was actually in the office. And it was the classic prototypical picture of a guy smoking a pipe with his feet up on the desk and the head of metaphysics. I mean, it was it was awesome. So I said, I'm sorry, Professor Tompkins. I, um, uh, I'm a student here. I wonder if I could ask you a question if you have a minute. And he said, sure, come in. And so I said, you know, um, I, I've gotten accepted into medical school, but I really always wanted to study metaphysics. And I don't know what to do. And I don't know if you have any advice. So he uh, takes his feet off the desk and he leans over the desk and he says to me, are you stupid? He says, um, <laughs> I got guys getting PhDs and they can't get a job. So just go to medical school. So I, that's, so I went and said, okay, man, I better go to medical school. So I went to medical school and then a friend of mine was going to film school. And, and I thought, uh, man, that sounds, you know, I've always loved film and everything, but I never actually thought of making movies until then. And then that's how I got. So after medical school, I went to NYU film school and I did, I was practicing, I had started practicing in the ER and I took a two month sabbatical and I went down to this, the school of continuing education in Washington square park at NYU. And then I did, uh, you know, seven days a week, uh, 12, 13 hours a day, we were making movies there. Wow. So I learned how to make movies down there. And then I came back to Canada and I continued practicing because I had debts and stuff. And you know, I didn't want to stop practicing either at that time. And, um, and then I made a short film that did really, really well. And then I made another short film that was shown on national TV in Canada on the equivalent of uh, Lifetime in Canada called WTN, Women's Television Network. That's and funny. so, um, <clears throat> and then after that, I moved to LA and started making uh, features down here. Very cool. So, sorry, long winded story. Feel free to cut me off at any time. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm always I'm always interested in how people started and, and where they start because there's always like some kind of interesting story as far as I mean it's rare that someone says yeah I've wanted to do this since I was little and then I went to film school and I started making movies like it's usually right. I was a plumber or I was this and that and like I've had a yeah. different jobs and I'm still trying to get my first feature made but that's neither here yeah. nor there. <laughs> are you are you so you're a filmmaker as well? I am. I am. Oh awesome. I have so a bunch have you done some shorts or are you just <laughs> going right into the feature world? I have a bunch of terrible shorts, um, but I'm very proud of them because it was basically mostly me, uh, yeah. you know, writing, directing, shooting, editing, and so even acting. That's awesome. Them. Um, so I'm proud of the effort that I put into them, but yeah. none of them to date are indicative of my skill level. So I'm kind of yeah. like waiting. I've ventured more into animating, like with Unreal Engine right now. That's kind of where I'm at. Uh -huh. um, but I'm, I'm still trying to, I, I, I want to make my narrative feature with a whole crew of people to do things. And I know <laughs> it's nice when I get to do that, so. <laughs> you will, that's that's awesome. But you know, um, yeah, don't get disheartened by uh, if what you feel are bad shorts because, uh, you know, it's all part of the process of, yeah. of learning and growing and, and getting better. You can't like, you know, you can't just pop out of the womb a great filmmaker. Nobody did that. Not yeah. Hitchcock, not Spielberg, nobody. Everybody um, made lots of mistakes along the way. And uh, and I don't even know if yours are mistakes or you're just being really hard on yourself. So <laughs> there were mistakes for the first few years, but but like I said, I'm, I'm I am proud of them. It's just I always I always try to tell people they're not that great because it's like the last yeah. thing I want is for someone to check it out and be like, how do I tell her? I was like, no, you can be honest. Like you can be, right. be honest with me. I prefer that. Um, but but yeah, well, that's very that's very good because that's how you're going to get better is by exactly. taking that criticism. Absolutely. Yeah. But the other the flip side of that is once it's done and once you've learned from it, you don't need to get kicked in the ass anymore. It's enough. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So but with Hypnotica, like so where did where did that 
where did the whole concept like I, I know you said that you yeah. you've had that experience but how did you say this is what i want to make this film and these are where these characters came from and like tell yeah. me about that whole process uh well look um i saw a film a long time ago about freud sigmund freud mm -hmm. and um he was hypnotizing a patient and it was it was like a docudrama so they had an actor playing freud and they had a patient and everything and i was amazed at how fascinated i was when he was hypnotizing that patient because we were going into the mind of this person and we didn't know where we were going and that's the thing about hypnotism is you don't know what secrets are there you don't know what you can unlock and what somebody's got in the back of their mind so that always stuck with me that and then you know sometimes uh you just don't have enough money to make the movie you want <laughs> you know i'm sure you can relate right yeah, very much <laughs> yeah yeah exactly so uh so then you've got to figure out a way to make a movie that excites you that you want to make anyway that the budget will feel like you had as much money as you needed for that movie and so that's where you know um kind of the genesis of hypnotica came along and then um uh, I read a lot of case studies on regression therapy and that's really amazing reincarnation and past lives and there's so many interesting cases that um, that have no explanation especially kids between the ages of three and seven even without hypnosis will tell you such specific details and then people will go and research that and find out it's exactly accurate and there is no way for that child to have known those things and I think there was a guy named Stevenson that was doing it uh, quite a while ago in the 60s. And then um, uh, he went and studied children in India and Asia and, and then uh, went from there. And uh, I think it was the University of Virginia. And then he, um, he kind of was the, one of the pioneers of that kind of. And then since then, there's been some, some really good work. So that's kind of the genesis of it. And then there's also good work by... Uh, Richard Gallagher, who's a board certified psychiatrist, who's gone on several um, exorcisms and seen wow. things that he has described in his book um, uh, uh, called, uh, what is it called? Uh, uh, Demons, uh, Foes, uh, something like that. I, I gotta remember, I'll remember in a second the name of his book. But um, he's actually, uh, a psychoanalyst at Columbia University, and he's uh, he's a professor at um, the uh, New York uh, Medical mm -hmm. University. So he's a very accomplished guy, and uh, I think Demons and Foes is the is the book, and um, and he uh, he talks about these uh, unbelievable experiences where he could not explain what he saw, and there are times where. Um, psychiatrists uh, run out of um, ideas, as is the case with this movie. I don't know if you had a chance to see the movie yet or not. Yes. And I, I was actually going to—I was going to ask you a few questions about it, but I wanted to keep it spoiler-free. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, no worries. Uh, so um, I appreciate that. Uh, so you know, um, so anyways, yeah. So uh, under um, hypnosis, uh, the idea is that. You don't know where you're going and what you'll find and so those that was kind of some of the genesis of this movie okay i'm touching on a bunch of different things but you know feel free to ask me anything about those. yeah and that that's one of the things that i thought was really neat was that the pat that it felt like the hypnosis was taking and i'm, I'm going to refer to it as the supernatural element because i don't want yeah. like i said i don't want to give away too much right um, but i feel like the 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 supernatural element came in where he was like almost like doing past life regression and so that's where i was kind of curious like where yeah. the inspiration came but you just explained that yeah um, and so so with the the doctor that you had mentioned with the um the the demonic dr gallagher yes dr gallagher yeah, yeah. um is so because I, I i noticed that there was a dis not a disclaimer but the little note at the end of the film is that was that more for um for the to kind of amp up the horror element or is that was that like personally just curious about that as far as like personal in what sense like m me personally having yes no personally i have not no okay personally i've not been involved in exorcisms um i've had i've seen a lot of patients uh you know in the psychiatric ward and i've been involved with uh psychoanalysis and therapy a lot 
um, in a lot of different aspects, um, but I have not been involved in terms of uh, demonic possession. And there was a guy, a, a, another psychiatrist, very well-known psychiatrist who passed away, M. Scott Peck, who actually was on PBS and everything. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to make uh, evil possession an actual um, diagnostic uh, criteria, uh, oh. or uh, diagnosis, sorry, uh, part of like DCM4, DSM4. Oh. Uh, so that you know you have bipolar illness or schizophrenia and then evil possession would be would wow. be a diagnosis so well there was there was that case that the the last conjuring movie was kind of based off of the devil made me do it that the real life that was the defense that the guy yeah. was demonically possessed and it's like so i i have a i do have a belief in in the supernatural or paranormal i have an absolute love and fascination of psychology and forensics and all of all of those things together yeah and so you know i'm, I'm pretty open-minded there are some things where I, I i hold like healthy skepticism and i question and yeah. it's like i i when i think about demonic possession it almost feels in, in my opinion it almost feels like it's a combination of like probably past life stuff with like just the, the feral parts of our nature you know uh yeah. like because you know as, as more like an esp kind of a an element to it is it is that what you're saying I can I can definitely see that, but I mean, like, so in, in how we are in society, you know, we're we're basically we have to follow rules to be able to get along together and and you know not hurt yeah. others and you know be locked away and stuff like that. Right. And so <laughs> it's like when you think about taming animals, right? Like they have certain behaviors that that is ingrained in their nature, and I kind of feel that's the same with humans, with the exception of we're so far evolved that we're pretty far removed from the feral parts of our nature. I think that we still have quite a bit of it like subconsciously so if you think about someone who's had like some kind of a psychotic break or yeah. if they are having like a spiritual psychotic kind of break I guess those those elements together would make it to where they're doing and saying these things that are like unexplained and and just like would come across as demonic yeah but it's yeah, well, and, 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 and that's it you know there's times where uh, Catholic priests and other priests will go to psychiatrists to make sure that before they do an exorcism I think it's required before they do an exorcism that they have a, a psyche valve and right. make sure that it's not um, actual uh, uh, mental illness uh, you know that they're trying to exercise yeah there's there's been a few a few of the more iconic cases that I looked into when I was younger that like the whole thing is just more than anything it just it fascinates me and I find it interesting so I thought it was really cool that those are elements that you included as well oh well, thanks yeah no it is fascinating and we don't know everything yeah. right I, I honestly believe that a lot of the stuff that that we tend to or we as a society tend to dismiss now as oh well that's just woo woo or that's this and that i feel yeah. like maybe even 20 years from now we'll start having more of an understanding and some like scientific um background for it like like near-death experiences you know right yeah so, why are they so similar? Why do people have the same kind of, yeah, I think you're right. And I think in, in 20 years, we'll know a lot more about the mind um, than we do now in areas that we just can't tap into right now. And, and this kind of mystery of what's locked up in there. I mean, that's the most interesting thing to me is what could be locked up, like what could be locked up in your mind right now, Tiffany, that you don't know, you may have secrets to things, you may be able to, to you know, have the answer to cancer. <laughs> That's a great title, the answer to cancer, but uh, you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, so it's crazy. Yeah, I, I, I have some childhood trauma, so I'm, I mean, I know there are some things locked away that I don't want to, you know, recall. Yeah, so good there. yeah, yeah, likewise, <laughs> likewise, Tiffany, trust me. Uh, I'm trying to unlock that shit, though, and, and deal with it, but, you know, it's not easy, <laughs> as you well know. Yeah. So uh, with you, so we we pretty much with we've gone over like how you've you've come to put these themes into your film. Um, I guess I'll go over the more like what was the casting process like? Like how did you? When hey, that's a great question. I always love talking about uh, this part. I mean, I I don't like auditions. Honestly, I don't know why people always look at me like, what's wrong with you that you don't like auditions? I think you're so fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody else loves auditions and I just, I get really zoned out after a while and I just, but then when somebody comes in and, um, and they nail it or they just get your attention, then you can get excited and you think, oh, wow, 
And so for for Adam, uh, for the guy who plays Oliver, the bearded guy in the movie, um, we actually, uh, my, my friend Netu, who's a producer on Hypnotica, had actually brought him in and he knew him, they were friends, and he had brought him in to do a cold reading of the next movie that we're going to do called Creature. And so, but Creature, you know, it was too much money at that time, so we weren't able to do it. But he brought him in, so Adam read, and I was like, holy shit, this guy's really fucking good. I mean, uh, I couldn't believe that he had never seen, never seen the script before. He got the character, he was, and he was just reading it. Nice. And I thought, man, we got it. So when I wrote Hypnotic, I thought about Adam and I even told him, uh, man, I'm writing something I got, I got you in mind for. And he said, great. And then, you know, when we were shooting, um, I remember being in the camera village and, uh, you know, he did a couple of scenes. And then like, I was like, uh, I looked at my producer and I was like, and, and I, I'm sure you've had this when you did your short films, there's something that happens where you get so excited and say, you know what, no matter how badly I blow this, we at least have a performance and somehow we should be able to fashion a film around just this guy, if nothing yeah. else, right? <laughs> so that's, that's huge. That's so big, the acting, the performance is everything. And he, he really, uh, I think, because he's completely different than that character in real life. And so he did a great job. So that was part of it. And then we did auditions and then the other actors, we brought them back and, and they just, you know, they seemed to be really uh, made sense at the time. That's cool. Yeah, I've, I've, I think I think one of my favorite parts of auditioning is when they're literally bringing that character to life and you get chills and it's like, oh, my gosh, you're yeah, making yeah. them feel. It's like it's I, like, I just wrote that, you know, I just wrote that shit. And now now it's actually real. It's kidding? like you did it better than I wrote it. Like, <laughs> yeah. feel free to rewrite it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, with, with a lot of my shorts, it's basically this is this is kind of a loose thing. If you feel that you, you've developed this character and you want to go with it, go with it. We'll see how that is. But. Yeah, that that is the hallmark to me of a great uh, cinema verite director. <laughs> I, that, I, that don't lose that. Yeah, I, I feel it's really, more collaborative. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm the same way. In this film, though, they whatever worked out, it worked out. They didn't go off script at all. But in the other stuff that I've done, um, I've told them always, don't you don't you're not on a railroad of dialogue here. Go with it. We can always, you know, do other stuff. And and so and in those in those things, they, they did improv around the, the dialogue. But um, here in this one, for whatever reason, it didn't just it didn't work out that way. Yeah. Well, um... I guess that pretty much the the last couple of things would be like it, where will people be able to check out Hypnotica and then what do you have coming up next? Uh, well, great questions. Uh, by the way, I, you know I've done a few of these interviews now, and it's nice to have somebody who's actually got questions that they want to ask and has done some research. And oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a it, it, you know, I really appreciate that. So thank you. Um, so Hypnotica is coming out from what I understand from the distributors. Terror Films is distributing it, and so it's coming out uh, March thirty first, uh, roughly I think, on streaming but exactly where I don't even know myself. So if you go to terrorfilms.com, um, that, that should give you uh, more information, excuse me. And um, the next project we're working on is like I said, Preacher. I'm very excited about that. Um, that's uh, in, along the similar along similar lines in that it does deal with a world famous forensic psychiatrist. Um, and uh, she's a woman, so she's overcome tremendous odds to be where she is. And she comes home one day after doing rounds in the prison in Trenton, in New Jersey. And um, she turns off her house alarm. And down the hall, she sees a steaming hot cup of espresso. But she just turned off her house alarm. Yeah. It should be empty. And then she starts to get frightened. And then she hears out of the shadows, hello, doctor. And then that turns out to be a guy, a character who is strongly based off of uh, the Iceman, Richard Kuklinski. Oh, that guy is scary as hell. <laughs> Did you see those <laughs> interviews with him? That guy Tiffany? is terrifying. Oh, man, oh, man. And then I don't know if you saw that part where the psychiatrist is interviewing him and he says something to, to trigger Kuklinski and his face gets red. And you're like, if this was in the real world, buddy, you would be dead. You're yeah. done. 
I didn't see that, but I've, I've seen a few different compiled documentaries about the guy, and I've seen clips of his interviews, and he's just, mm. he's just terrifying. I'm like, yeah, he's like the literal definition of a sociopath, and you would never like. Ugh. No, exactly, exactly. And how and he, he was killing wife. people. Ooh. He had a wife and three kids in the suburbs who had no idea what he did right he killed over 200 people that he can remember yeah. um, this guy was and his brother was even worse his older brother was even worse oh, wow. but they caught him early he raped a woman and threw her off the off a rooftop and that's how they caught him but he'd already killed three or four people before that so you know i watched those interviews with him and it just stuck with me and then i thought imagine if there are no guards, if there is no bars, no glass, and you're in your own home, and this guy's like six five. Yeah. I mean, uh, so so that's that's creature, but in creature also is um, the husband is coming home. So it's really at the core of creatures uh, this incredible love story between these two people, the psychiatrist and her husband. That's really the essence of the movie. So, and, and the creature himself is more of a catalyst for that. Uh, but uh, so, uh, you know, um, the movie kind of weaves around those things. So we're in development now for that. Nice, very cool. Yeah. Well, um, when you have any any news on that that you want to drop by, you can always come to us and we'll be happy to chat about it. Where right are you located? Up. So, oh, oh, I meant like pop horror. Um, I'm, I'm unfortunately, I'm stuck in Texas right now, but I'm trying to get out. So, <laughs> anyway, where like, in Texas are you? I'm, I'm in San Antonio. It's San Antonio. It's, okay. Yeah, yeah. I was born and raised here, and so I, I lived in Dallas for a bit, and then came back to, to help kind of take care of my mom because she's, she's ill. But, um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's got to be hard. It, it's been a challenge. It's definitely interesting. Um, nobody really talks about senior care and how, you know, that no. in, in, in our health and, and as we're aging. So it's been a real weird. And the loneliness, thing. Tiffany. Our elderly are, are getting very alone and afraid. Yeah. Yeah. So that's definitely going to be a script at some point. I just don't know when, but. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully sooner than later. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. So. Well, I won't keep you from your lunch, but it's been a great chat and I appreciate Pleasure. your time. And Thanks so much, Tiffany. I appreciate the time. All right. Very cool. Well, thank you. Right. And, uh, Take hope care. To talk to you soon. <laughs> Take care. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs>